hi guys welcome to the next video of the stress 2 tutorial series in the last video we checked a small hello world application and we learned how to set up a stress 2 project in this video we will check the stress 2 configuration elements of stress 2 xml file in little more detail now this will also be kind of theory stuff but wherever possible i will try to show the code as well in stress.xml file, we define all the configuration related to our stress2 application. We can define packages, actions for the packages, interceptors that can be called for a particular action, and so on. Now, let's start with the package element first. Now, we can actually group different actions for a particular module together in a package. So whatever properties our package element have, it will be shared by all of its actions. Now we can have n number of package elements inside this trust tag. And inside the package element, we can have n number of action elements. Now each package element will have its unique name. It will have its namespace and it extends from a stress default package. Now namespace attribute is optional and if it is not there then the default value slash is assumed for that package. But the question is what is this namespace attribute used for? Now, this is used to give a base URI to all the actions under this package. Now that will be like a module name. So generally we group all the actions of a module in a package. So we may want to give a common base name URI to all these actions inside this package. So now the URI to an action will be the namespace of the package slash the name of the action. It not only allows us to modularize the actions, but it helps us in resolving and conflicting action names in different packages. Now once the namespace is provided for a package, we cannot access their actions without the package namespace URI. We have to provide the package namespace URI slash the name of the action to access a particular action. Okay, now see what this extends attribute means. Now it tells the controller that the package is extending or inheriting from struts default package. So where is this struts default package? Now this struts default package is present in the struts default XML file, and this XML file is there in the struts2 core Java file. And there are lots of result types and interceptors declared in, in, in that struts default package, and hence they become part of our package since we have inherited from them. After that, all the actions can use those results and interceptors easily without registering them once again. Okay, now let's move to the action element now. Now it must have a name that corresponds to the URI of that action. So to invoke that action, we need to use its name as the URI. And if any namespace is associated with the package, then we need to prefix that namespace followed by a slash followed by the action name and this is how the URI of that particular action is formed and the class attribute is used for specifying the action class we need to give a fully qualified class name here and once a user hits the action URL the controller finds an action element associated with that request URL and then instantiates this action class. Now an action element may or may not have any class. Now if one action element doesn't have any class 
then a default class is assigned to that element and that default action is in instantiated by the struts2. The default class name is action support. So an instance of action support will be created and its execute method will be called. And this action support execute method simply returns a success string. It actually doesn't do anything in its execute method. As a result, corresponding result will be executed. In effect, an action element without an action class is generally used to simply invoke a JSP using an action element. The idea is to fetch the JSP using the Struts2 framework and its controller instead of directly fetching it from the server. So to fetch a JSP, we should have an action element without a class name and there should be only one result element with a name as success. An action element has one method attribute by which we can specify which method of the action class to be executed. Now, if it's missing, the if it's missing, then the default execute method will be called. So let's give a different method. Say it hello. We want to call a hello method of this hello world action class. Let's create one hello method in this action class. It should have the same signature. Just give it a name hello. And here change the sys out inside hello method. Okay, run this on the server and test it out. Okay, now we I've got this error here because we have not set up any action element for the context root for of our project. Now Struts is trying to find an empty action name under the namespace slash and since it's not able to find such an action under the namespace slash it's throwing this error. Now we will see how to avoid this error subsequent video but for time being let's test our action URL hello world so let's append this URL here and test it out okay so we got the sys out from the hello method so we could see that after providing method attribute in struts.xml for that action, struts was able to invoke the hello method of the hello world action class. So this is the, the importance of this method attribute. We will see there are some more scenarios we can actually use this method attribute. Uh, we'll see that in some subsequent video. This is it for this video. We will see the remaining elements in the next video. I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching.